In this video, I'm gonna be showing you the must-have four-wheel drive accessories for your four-wheel drive. Just to be clear though, if you have a four-wheel drive, you don't actually need any of these accessories. It just makes your life a little bit easier, safer, and allows you to flex on your mates. Now, the first accessory a lot of people get is a lift kit. And we at Fulcrum actually don't recommend you get a lift kit first. We tell you to go get all your accessories fitted, mainly because once you get your lift kit, you can set your spring rates to all of the accessories weight and allow for that. However, if you want to go out for four-wheel driving now, you can get the lift kit straight away and just adjust the spring rates later on to suit all the accessories weight. But why would you want to get a lift kit? Well, a lift kit lets you get more clearance, which then in turn allows you to fit bigger tires. And bigger tires then gives you more ground clearance, which allows you to get over ruts, juts, and other obstacles off four-wheel driving. The lift kit we've gone with is the two-inch Formula 4x4 Remote Res lift kit. Now, the main reason we went with this particular lift kit is because we're doing a little bit of touring mixed with some hard tracks. So we wanted the best possible comfort on and off-road. Now, to pick the best lift kit for yourself, I recommend you think about what sort of four-wheel driving you're doing and pick a kit based around that. Now, if you're unsure exactly what kit that is, I recommend you reach out to the Fulcrum stores or the customer service team, and then we'll be happy to help you out picking the best lift kit to suit what you're doing. So in summary, the main reason people get lift kits is because it allows more clearance, allows you to fit bigger tires, it gives you a better cooling efficiency for your shock, and allows better on and off-road performance. So if you're thinking about getting a lift kit, I highly recommend you reach out to us and we can help you out. The next big upgrade a lot of people get for their car is protection, such as bull bars, side steps, bash plates, and so on. If you didn't already know, this is a bull bar. Now, aftermarket bull bars have the added benefit that they generally have better approach angles, which allows you to get up steeper inclines and rock steps. The main purpose of a bull bar though is generally safety, and that helps you protect the car off-road, also maybe on-road with car accidents, and wildlife on or off-road. We've opted for the EGR bull bar for this car, mainly because not only do we like the look and design of this thing, it also has a lot of extra integrated features. It has the integrated winch cradle, so that way if we wanted to add a winch later on, we can always do so. It also has the integrated bash plate underneath. Now, all of this is very important, mainly because it helps protect the vehicle when off-road. This bull bar also has integrated sensors, which is very important for a lot of new model cars. One thing to consider when choosing your bull bar is the material it's made out of, the design, and if you need any sort of integrated features, such as a winch cradle and bash plate. If you have a newer car, you also want to consider if you have any sort of added safety features such as sensors and radars. An upgrade that I consider to be really important is aftermarket side steps or rock sliders. Now, not only do they look really damn good, they add important protection to the body of your car. This helps when you're going through things such as close walled and tracks, leaning into ruts or rocky terrain. When trying to choose the difference between aftermarket side steps or rock sliders, you need to consider what you're going to be doing. So aftermarket side steps are really good if you're going to be doing light to medium four-wheel driving and you don't ever need to rest the whole entire weight of the car on the steps themselves. Uh, rock sliders, however, though, they can actually take the full weight of the car. So they're really good if you're going to be doing some extreme to hard sort of four-wheel driving and going to go through a lot of like riverbeds, large rock steps, things like that. We've gone for the Fat Bars angled rock sliders, mainly because we do like the look of them and because we just don't know where we're going to be taking this car. So we wanted to account for the worst case scenario. What if you want better traction and ground clearance off-road? Well, that's where tires will come in. You want to try and decide whether you want all-terrain or mud-terrain tires, depending on what you're going to be doing, and also factor in what size tire you want. But what about tire size? Well, you've got to try and factor in what you're going to be doing. If you're going off-road a lot, I highly recommend looking at larger tires, so that way you can get more ground clearance and also have a bigger footprint, giving you more traction, but if you're going to be doing a lot of touring, I probably wouldn't go all the way up to like a 35 or something like that or a 33. Maybe look at a slightly small tire size so that way you don't wear through the tire so quickly and you don't eat through your fuel. You'll want an all-terrain tire if you're going to be doing a lot of touring, mainly because you'll save a lot on tire wear, road noise and typically cost of the tire itself. If you're planning on doing a lot of hard four-wheel driving though, I highly recommend you get yourself some mud terrains, mainly because it gives you more traction, has a stronger sidewall, which helps protect from punctures and things like that off-road. There's a lot of talk online about how big you should go, what brands and what styles of wheels you should get. Now, my personal opinion is that you should just choose based on what you're gonna be doing with the car, what sort of look you want to go for, and also your budget. 
For ourselves, we've gone with these 33 inch equivalent Falcon Wild Pig tires. They're an all terrain tire, which means they're gonna be quiet and fuel efficient on road, but they still give great off road performance. They've got them wrapped around ROH Raid wheels, which the overall look and design we love, and it suits the rest of the build we were going for. Last but not least, most people add some sort of storage system onto their four-wheel drive. This is so that way they can store things like their fridges, tools, spare parts, food, and maybe a 12 volt system. We've personally gone with a canopy system because we've set up this car for touring. We wanted the easiest space possible to work with so that way we could customize it however we wanted. Some people though, they might just go for some simple drawers in the back of their car, or maybe even just a container to hold their stuff. I highly recommend you plan out your storage system though, including any accessories such as fridges, 12 volt systems, and so on, even if you plan on getting them down the track. Mainly because you'll be stuck setting up multiple different versions and you'll be stuck paying twice for the same setup. No matter how you do it, adding a storage system is an excellent way to keep track of where you store stuff in the vehicle. Plus it also has the added benefit of making full driving, camping, and touring that little bit easier. There's a whole bunch of different modifications we haven't mentioned, such as 12 volt systems, UHFs, fridges, and so on. These are just the modifications we've decided to start with. However, you can start wherever you'd like. After all's been said and done, these are just my recommendations on modifications where you should start, but it is still your car at the end of the day, so you get to choose what modifications you actually do. If you wanna know anything about the products in this video, there'll be links down in the description. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section and I'll answer them for you. Otherwise guys, go out there and go exploring. What are you doing in there? Why aren't you in here? I don't know, I'm just, I'm out here opening the door. Oh, it's better in here. Oh, uh, it probably is. The exact, <clears throat> better. <laughs> Another thing to consider when choosing your <laughs> you, crow. Oi! Cool, is he gone? Hey, he stopped him. <laughs> yeah.